Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. And I'm Steve Wilkes. We're going to step off the uh, step off the beaten path today. <laughs> step off. The, <laughs> we're going to. Sorry. We're, we're going to try something that uh, we have advised people not to do in the past. Indeed. Drink our beer. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I only do that to save my beer. <laughs> I see. I'm like, don't drink that. You wouldn't like that. This is what we're going to play with today. Yeah. I picked this up at the hardware store. It is a little three gallon uh, plastic jug that, that, you get, uh, that you get spring water in. Right. And uh, back in the day, uh, they used to say, don't use those plastic water jugs. Oh. And I, I went back to, to you know, advice that I had given on the on the show in the very beginning, and people would write in, "Don't why can't I use those plastic water jugs that I see at the at the grocery store?" Because they say not to use them. Yeah, because somebody <laughs> told me. I used to ask the same question, and still do occasionally. So I'd walk past the big display and think, "Well, why can't I just do that?" Right. But I'd never done it. My fear was uh, not so much the plastic here, although there are some other concerns about chemical leaking and all that, which I never really thought about. But I was concerned about getting this little handle area clean. Mm -hmm. and that was the, the thing that always kind of stopped me from doing it. Well, back in the day, as I remember it, um, the argument was that you needed to use glass and not plastic because plastic gets scratched and yes. harbors bacteria and other nastiness. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, here more lately, there's all this concern about things leaching from the plastic into... I mean, people are afraid of plastic water bottles, for crying yeah. out loud now. Right. Now, uh, uh, two things. There are commercial plastic bottles now that are designed for brewing. Mm -hmm. So that kind of made me think, well, maybe I could use just the off-the-shelf kind. Uh, and I had a conversation with uh, toxicologist Paul, who's been <laughs> on the, uh, the audio side. We've done three shows with uh, Paul, the toxicologist. Um, and he's debunked all kinds of myths about... Uh, you know, things being toxic in home brewing. Uh, and one of the things, I talked to him about this and he said, it's food safe, mm -hmm. don't worry about it, nothing is gonna leach from, you know, beer fermentation that wouldn't leach from just water at room temperature. Gotcha. Yep. So, uh, so with that advice, I said, well, let's go ahead and try this. So I made a pale ale with the jug and let me go through the process and, okay. then, and then we can taste it and see if I, if I did something bad. All right. Well, first of all, I, I used the, this came with three gallons of, uh, of spring water. So that's what I started with. I started with the three gallons of the spring water that was in there. I heated it up to, or three gallons or 11.3 liters. I heated it up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 C. And I was using Baruna bag, so I lined my kettle with the bag and into that I put four pounds or 1.8 kilograms of two row, American two row. Mm -hmm. And I rested at 152 degrees Fahrenheit or 66 C for 60 minutes. And uh, then I brought that, to, afterwards I, I took the bag out and using these nice thick rubber gloves that are designed for uh, barbecuing basically, for picking ribs up right out of the smoker, I uh, used to use those to squeeze the bag and that, I got almost all of my water back uh, from squeezing, uh, squeezing <laughs> out, out of the grains. So I started my boil, and uh, at the beginning of the boil, I added 21 grams of Cascade for 60 minutes, 7 grams of Cascade at 15 minutes, and then 28 grams of Centennial at flame out. And so my original gravity, oh, oh, and I chilled it, and I poured it through a funnel right into the, the plastic jug, and I just poured all of it. <laughs> including the tube yeah. from the bottom of the kettle. Uh, so I ended up with a, uh, an original gravity of 1047, final gravity of 1010 for an ABV of 4.9%. So after, after it was done, and you can go ahead and open our, our beer while I'm talking with our basic brewing bottle opener, which you can get free with any of our DVD combos or you can buy it <laughs> separate at the store. Check someone on the honor. So anyway, uh, after I emptied it, you know, you're left with the, the grunge from uh, the sludge and stuff from fermentation. And what I did to clean it was I simply put a scoop of automatic dishwashing powder into it and filled it up about halfway with the hot tap water, shook the heck out of it to mix it up, and then filled it all the way back up to the very top 
uh, with, the, with more hot water and just let that sit overnight. Next day, all that stuff was dissolved away. And uh, I just rinsed it three or four times to get all the, the stuff out. Mm -hmm. And you can smell it. In fact, I've, I've run two batches of beer through this. Mm, Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> it smells a little like beer. No, it doesn't smell. It smells a teeny bit like beer, but not any more no. than uh, your plastic yeah. brewing bucket. And I used a nine and a half stopper. Probably could have used a, a ten because it almost is too small. Yeah. But well, there you go. That's exactly how I clean uh, glass carboys, and right. so. And here's the beer. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. That's lovely. That's a nice little pale ale. Play a little. Play a It's a nice beer. It's a new style. Play a little. It's 28C. There's some hops in that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shoot. I'd pay a dollar for that. Now, do you taste any plasticky tastes or anything off? No. In it at all? No. No. It's just a nice, simple, yeah, straightforward pale ale. It's good. I, I think it's pretty good too. I think it's really good, and it's nice because here's a smaller fermenter, you, you know, that's a nice, convenient size. It's small enough you can pick it up and move it. You don't have to have, you know, and even if, if the worst happened and you should drop it, it'll it bounce. might. It'll be, well, it <laughs> might bounce. It might also split open if yeah. it's full of liquid, but at least it won't be glass shards everywhere. That's true. So that's a plus. And I, and I should say that this is a, was a two gallon batch. I don't know if I mentioned that, but but you get about three six packs out of it. Yeah. Um, so great again for testing recipes or and it's this is lightweight. So if you have problems lifting things, yeah. uh, very lightweight and the handle. I mean, when this is you know I could just shake the heck out of this to aerate it. You know, covering. Oh yeah. You know, with the aluminum foil on the top. Uh, but um, oh, I used a Safel USO five as the yeast. I forgot to say I think. So. There you go. Well, um, and it all, all it cost was the deposit, which is like seven bucks, I think. I think the water, the whole thing was like twelve bucks, and then right. the, the deposit on the on the jug was like seven. And then I guess the only question I would have about using that would be, how many times could you use it? I mean, can you use it indefinitely, or would you feel comfortable? You know, I'm making this up as I go. Yeah. You know, three or four times, and then trade it in, get a new one. Well, you could, you could. That's the, that's you the could, beauty of it is you can all, you can always go and I mean, and this tastes. The water made some, made a pretty good pale ale. Yeah, yeah. This is a um, nice, nice, easy beer. Very good. So it works well with hops, whatever mm -hmm. the um, uh, the mineral profile is. So yeah, you could. I mean, if you're worried about it, you just go trade it in, and get a new one. Um, but uh, I. You know, I think I, I've, I've brewed in it twice, so I want to, you know, part, I want to kind of push it. I want to yeah. see how far I can go yeah. and have it, uh, you know, see if there's anything that breaks <coughs> in the system. So, there you go. There you go. Pretty simple. Um, I, I've gotten emails and tweets and posts from people who say that they use these things already. So, cool. I, you know, we're not, we're not breaking new grounds. It's, it's just... Uh, you know, there are a lot of things in home brewing that are that that we don't do because it's always been said not to do it, right? Or we do it because it's always <clears throat> been said to do it. And I like to always, you know, kind of challenge the boundaries a little bit. Absolutely. So there you go. All right. Happy Cheers. Brewing. Cheers. Happy brewing. Happy brewing. See you next time. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and our Basic Brewing Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to James at basicbrewing.com, Steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I got a something, just a, like a little something. A little feather? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a dog hair or a gnat or something. In this house? <clears throat> In this house.